Welcome to our lecture online. So far we have seen how to calculate the instantaneous power. Now let's find out how to calculate the average power. And from calculus, it makes sense that if we take the average power of something, we simply take 1 over the period times the integral of the function over the period. That should give us the average value of the function. Now for reference, we kept in the equation for the instantaneous power. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take the instantaneous power and integrate over that from 0 to t over a period and then of course divide it by t or multiply times 1 over t to get that average value. Now we're going to separate it into two integrals because we know that when we multiply this times this we get a constant and then if we multiply this times this, this is the time varying portion that we'll have to integrate. So this then becomes equal to the following power average is going to be equal to 1 over the period times this quantity which would be 1 half i max v max times the cosine of the difference between the two phase angles theta sub i minus theta sub v all this is a constant times the integral of what's remaining dt from 0 to t and then we're going to add to that the, the integral of the second portion, this multiplied times this. Now this is a constant, so we can write 1 over t times 1 half i max v max times the integral of the cosine of 2 omega t plus the two phase angles dt and also we're going to integrate that from 0 to t. Alright, now when we integrate the first one, that's easy enough. The integral of dt is t, and then we take the limits from 0 to t. We get the following. So this is equal to 1 over t times 1 half i max v max times the cosine of the difference of the angles, the phase angles, times t evaluated from 0 to t. Of course, when we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. Plug in the upper limit, we get t. And then this t will cancel out with this t. And we'll see what happens the next. And then over here, this is the constant. So this is equal to 1 over t times 1 over 2 i max v max. And the integral of the cosine is the sine. But we have the cosine of 2 omega t, which means we need an omega t differential, so we need a 1 over 2 omega, I should say 2 omega dt as a differential, so we need 1 over 2 omega times the integral of the cosine of 2 omega t plus theta sub i plus theta sub v times 2 omega dt, so that's why we, in the, we multiply it here and we divide it over here from 0 to t, now over here, when we plug in the limits, remember we get a t over here, we have 1 over t over there, so that cancels out, and we end up with 1 half i max v max times the cosine of theta sub i minus theta sub v. And then, oh, that should not be an equal sign, this should be a plus sign, there we go. And then over here, we can write this as 1 over, so plus 1 over 2 times 2, so that would be 4 omega t times i max v max times, now when we integrate this, we'll get, end up with the sine of 2 omega t plus theta sub i plus theta sub v evaluated from 0 to t. Now, let's take a look at that integral. If we evaluate it, when we plug in a 0 over here, we end up with sine of the phase angles. When we put in a t over here, 2 omega times t, the period, that will get us back to the same as the sine of 0. So essentially, what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with the sine of the phase angles minus the sine of the phase angles, which is 0. So when we evaluate this here, we end up with 0. Again, plug in 0 here, we get sine of the phase angles. Plug in t there, the 2 omega times the period is the same as 0. So that again cancels out, so we have the sine of, of the phase angles again. When we subtract, 
we end up at zero. So this whole term right here goes to zero, which means that the average power, power average, is simply equal to one half I max V max times the cosine of the difference of the phase angles, which when you take a look at it, is that very first part here, this times this, in our instantaneous power equation. And then if you remember when we graphed it, remember when we graphed the instantaneous power equation, we had the line here, and the value of this line was equal to this expression. And then our instantaneous power function would then oscillate about that as the central point. And now you can see how that makes sense, that if this is the instantaneous power graph, and then if we draw a line right down the middle of that, which is equal in value to this expression right here, that will then give us the average power. Because after all, the average of a sine wave is the average value, the, point, the line that goes right through the middle of the sine wave. And so there you can see that the average power is simply that constant portion of the instantaneous power. And that's how we find it.